you guys, Chelsea Phillips here. Welcome to October 30th DVD update. Where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last two weeks or so. Like I always say, guys, if you enjoy these updates, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below what you guys saw the titles I checked out. Any future titles coming up which you guys would like me to review for future updates. Now, the first one I got from Shop Factory Screen Factory line is a new movie called Stung, The Ultimate Buzzkill. It's a pretty cool throwback killer wasp movie. You know, stars Lance Henriksen. It's basically about these two people who are, you know, working at a catering company. You can tell they kind of like each other and you know they're not dating but there's something with them and it kind of throws them into this whole situation of there's these wasps that kind of come out of the ground during the whole party and start to bite the you know and you know sting the party guests people that get stung from the wasps end up kind of like dying and then the inside of them a gigantic wasp grows inside their body kills them there's this great like practical effect and cool sequences of like the wasps coming out of their stomachs and their heads coming off and you know them transforming and becoming the giant wasps and it's the, basically the um catering company and then the other people, party guests, hiding and locking themselves inside of the mansion, trying to figure out how they're going to survive, and um, it kind of has like another living dead thing, you know, those kind of movies too, and it's like kind of trapped in one location, figuring out how they're going to survive, what they're going to do, if other people come around, they're like, don't come in there, they're going to get stung by the you know, by the wasps. I always like these kind of killer bug kind of movies, and this was a cool, uh, like I said, real throwback one, has on here a commentary track. Uh, making of Stung, production vlogs, and a theatrical trailer. It was a pretty cool, like I said, throwback giant bug film. Uh, the next one is another new film from um, Screen Factory as well, and this is Blood Sucking Bastards. And this is, you know, it stars Joey Kern, who was from uh, the Cabin Fever film. And it's basically kind of has like a comedy horror film. It's, it has a real office space kind of vibe because the whole movie is set inside of an office building, and it's kind of mixed with like a vampire movie and a zombie movie, like that kind of vibe to it. And it's basically about this guy who works at the, the office building and he really thinks he's going to get this promotion. And, you know, he's been like, you know, kind of promised that it's going to be given to him. Uh, pretty much he's really sure it's going to happen. But at the same time, he's had this huge fight with his girlfriend and they aren't speaking and they pretty much have broken up and he doesn't know what's going to happen with them. And when he ends up not getting the job, and it's, it's, it's one of this arch nemesis guys that really isn't qualified for it, or at least he says isn't, ends up getting the job over him. And as soon as he starts working there, weird things start to happen to the people who are working there. People start to vanish. Strange things start to happen around the office building. It eventually leads up to a huge fight, you know, between the office workers and then what has happened to the office people who are there. It's a pretty cool, like I said, comedy horror film mixed with like a vampire kind of film. Has them here outtakes and a, a commentary track on the film as well. Uh, the next one from um, Magnolia's Magnet Line is uh, the film Tiger House. And it stars, you know, uh, the actress who was in you know, the Maze Runner films, and she was in The Truth About Emmanuel, and it's basically, she goes up, goes to her boyfriend's house, and uh, the family, though, is giving the boyfriend all these kind of problems with her, they, they, they you know, he comes from a real rich family, they don't like her, they think she doesn't have any money, and they don't like her living situation, they're kind of picking on it, saying the kind of house she lives in, and saying something about her parents, and stuff like that, and, you know, she's kind of in the house there, and the parent, you know, when the parents kind of knock on the door because they're in their room together, she hides under the covers. And basically, though, you know, they're, she gets, in, you know, the uh, the boyfriend gets in a fight with the parents about the whole thing and uh, the girlfriend and all that kind of stuff. And then she basically goes and she wants, to, she's like, I'm gonna get out of here. I can't deal with this. And he's like, Oh, don't leave, don't leave. And, and then he locks the the window behind her. And she's like, Okay, I'll stay. So she ends up staying up in the attic while he talks to the parents more. Like I said, the par the parents have no idea she's actually in the house. But this happens at the same time. These group of these criminals end up, uh, you know, staging this break into this house. And she basically ends up trapped in this house while the, the their boyfriend's parents end up getting attacked. The boyfriend gets hit over the head. And it's kind of her hiding out in this house, trying to figure out what she's going to do, how she's going to get out of the place, kind of why the, the criminals are in there doing things and kind of, they're trying to do some kind of robbery thing. I couldn't pick up on exactly what they were doing, some of it. But this essentially is though, really, it's all her trying to figure out how to get out of this place and kind of hiding around, running throughout the house when there are like in other rooms and things like that. I thought this was actually pretty cool. It has on here making of Tiger House in a trailer. But like I said, that's essentially what the plot of it is, is her trying to figure out how she's going to get out of this place and how she's going to survive and how she's going to, you know, protect the boyfriend as well. 
Uh, the next one from Warner Brothers is the Vacation, uh, you know, reboot. I guess it's it's not really a reboot to it. It really is a sequel because it's, you know, the rusty character grown up now. But it is, you know, kind of does start the series over again. And it's you know in a way, but it's also like I said, it's not really a full reboot because it really is a sequel. Um, and this, you know, stars Ed Helms and Christine Applegate. And you know, Ed Helms is is Rusty Griswold. He's okay. I just, I did not absolutely love him in this role, but the movie's basically Ed Helms with his wife, you know, played by uh, Kristen Applegate, and, you know, they have kind of issues with the family, and they aren't really, he, he really feels like they need to spend some time together, and he really wants to relive the kind of trip that he had when he was younger, you know, he went to Wally World with his dad, you know, Chevy Chase, his, you know, and his mom, Beverly D'Angelo, and his sister, and he really wants to go and relive that event again, and he basically wants to go on the same kind of a trip with his family, and it's basically them going on the trip, and kind of the stuff that ends up happening. Of course, there's no Randy Quaid, because Randy Quaid was, you know, in Canada, and like all kind of his issues and stuff like that. It would have been amazing if Randy Quaid, they found a way to get him in this, though, because he was the one aspect that was missing, and you can't, you know, there's no, Randy Quaid's someone you can't replace. You know, it's just, it's just impossible. And like, not having him in this really was one thing I really missed. But if that's essentially what it is, is the kind of troubles they get in along the way. And, you know, the trailer, though, the trailer does, if you haven't seen the trailer for this, don't watch the trailer and then see the movie, because the trailer does give away a lot of the gags. That's the problem with a lot of comedy movies nowadays, is the trailer gives away so many of the gags, and something that's like the mud bath being, you know, I don't want to ruin it if you haven't seen the trailer, but they just, that's the only shame of it. But it has on here a number of making of uh, gag reel and deleted scenes, but I thought it was actually a fun movie, but not... No way can top the original National Lampoon's Vacation. Uh, the next one from Universal, this one, you know, certified fresh, and I actually agree, this really was a, a serious surprise and how great this movie was, and one that I would highly recommend you guys check out, and this is um, the movie starring Jason Bateman, or uh, Rebecca Hall, and Joe Egerton called The Gift, and it's basically, though, about um, Jason... Uh, Bateman and his girlfriend Rebecca Hall and you know they're together and then all of a sudden this guy starts coming around because he ends up seeing them at a they're out buying furniture. He ends up seeing them, starts talking to them, and saying, "Oh, I remember you. Don't you remember me from the past?" Um, you know, and, and he's like, "Oh, I don't really remember you. I don't remember this guy." And Jason Bateman's being kind of weird about the whole thing. You can tell that there's something in the past with these guys, and the movie's kind of you trying to discover. What in the past happened between these guys? Because, uh, you know, Joel Egerton's character is kind of... Right, as soon as he sees him, he starts to kind of stalk him. He kind of starts coming around the house, starts giving them gifts, won't leave them alone. He's always coming around. Jason Bateman is kind of telling him to go, you know, leave, go away. And the movie's basically, though, is like just him becoming a serious stalker of them, but at the same time, leaving, you know, saying things to him like, I'm letting it go, I'm letting go what happened in the past, and I'm not like, letting bygones be bygones, and I'm not going to hold on to this, but eventually things start to really fall apart. Um, it has on here an alternate ending, deleted scenes, um, and a commentary track, and some featurettes on the movie, but I, it's one of those movies, I don't want to say too much about what happens in this, and ruin the details of this, but it really, really was cool, and I really thought the ending pays off really well. And the next one from Paramount is Terminator Genesis, the new Terminator film. And I actually really liked this movie. I actually thought that it was really worked and was pretty cool. Different thing. Of course, it can never top T2, which I really loved. But this movie, you know, goes back into T2 in its own way. It's a little hard to explain things because it changes, like, the details around and things like that. And, like, going into the past. And I always love those kind of things. It's kind of like what they did with Back to the Future 2, you know, going back into the first movie. In a, in a way, that's kind of what it's like. It's a shame, though, that... It didn't do as well as I think they had hoped. Because if when I heard they're not going to be doing more you know, of this series, at least I hope that's not the case. Because I actually would really like to see more with these characters and this kind of way this was going. But the movie's basically about uh, the, John Connor's character sends back uh, Kyle Reese, who goes to basically protect Sarah Connor. And basically, when he goes back there, the whole history ends up getting changed around. And he has to try and stop... He basically wants to try and stop the whole thing from happening with the, you know, when the whole world gets, like, blown up. You guys know the story about the uh, aftermath thing and everything, when all the people die and that. He wants to try and stop that from happening at Skynet, and that's basically what it is, is him trying to stop that. But, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger comes back into this movie, and, you know, they even have the older version of him, too. I actually, I like this, you know, and they explain how he eats pretty well, too. But 
like I said, it, I thought that it actually worked. It was actually a pretty cool story. It has on here, though, um, some featurettes in the film, you know, uh, casting the film's iconic characters, uh, shooting on locations and stuff on the visual effects. But I would say this is really worth checking out. If you like the Terminator films, I thought this was actually a pretty cool movie. Like I said, you know, it is only PG-13. I think The Salvation was PG-13 as well, but then they released it, you know, in an unrated version. But for what it was, I actually really liked it, and I, I don't see why it had some negativity behind it, because I, I was happy to see Arnold Schwarzenegger back in this and really thought that it was pretty cool. Uh, the next one from uh, Disney Pixar is uh, Disney's Inside Out. This has on here a brand new short film, Riley's First Date, and also has on here the short that played before the movie, The Lava Short, which I actually loved that short. I actually cried for that when I saw it in theaters. It was like, like, they always do an amazing job with their shorts, you know, the Pixar shorts that they do before the movies. But this is basically like, kind of has an Amosis Jones vibe to it. It's kind of like these characters that are inside of your head controlling what you do and they like, for your sadness and happiness and they have like these little ball things that come down with like your memories in it but they're kind of they're kind of controlling what you do but of course the sadness character ends up screwing things up and the uh, happy memories end up getting all messed up and the characters have to kind of the two of them have to go down and try and sadness and happiness have to go and try and get them back and fix the memories so the girl is not all depressed because she becomes really, really depressed and things start to fall apart and all the memories fall apart and all like the happiness lands and things. It's hard to explain, but that's really what it is. It's a really, really good movie. I, you know, like I said, I always love the Pixar movies and they always kind of have those things where sometimes you see the trailers, you don't know if they're going to be that great. Like the trailer for this one, I didn't think the trailer for this one seemed as cool to me as some of the other ones, but then I ended up liking this one more more than I've liked any of the other ones in a long time. My favorite Pixar one to me is is definitely Wally. I've always really loved Wally. I love the stuff at the end of that one. Uh, but this one though, I would highly recommend checking out. Has on here though, like I said, um, some features in the movie and it's, as well as the brand new short Riley's first date. But check this one out. I really like this. Also from uh, Disney Pixar is Toy Story that Time Forgot, which is a I don't know when this one aired on TV, but it's a 22 minute short. And it's basically um, a, you know, the Toy Story characters, and it's the, the one I, I can't remember, I, I don't really remember the third one that well, but the, it's vo the one character is voiced by the one who's from Last Man on Earth, and it's basically the Toy Story characters who are with the new family that they're, you know, with the, all of them, Buzz Lightyear and everything, and Woody, and uh, the kid ends up taking the, the characters over to their friend's house to play, and they end up getting there, and there's these toys there that don't know their toys, and they basically have to try and, um, f you know, have to fight them and things like that, and get into a whole thing with them. That's that's pretty much what it was. Like I said, it's only 22 minutes, but they do a great job, with, like I said, with these short films. And I, I think this was, like, made for ABC. There was another one, too, that was, like, a Halloween short as well. Uh, like I said, I don't know when this one aired. I don't know how long ago back this one was. But it has on here uh, Battlesaurus, the alternate uh, animated opening for the fictional TV series, um, the origin of the Wasteland characters. And it kind of has, like, a Mad Max kind of type characters mixed with, like, the lizard people in it, the, the kind of characters that are the toys that don't know their toys. And, um... I also have on here Toy Story Goes to Comic-Con, but a cool one, especially for Toy Story fans. Uh, the next one, this is one of my favorite things in the update, and I had no idea, too, this is one of the writers of this, was Joshua John Miller, who was a child actor. I've always was a huge fan of this guy. And, you know, he was in River's Edge. He was in Meet the Hollowheads. Um, he was in Near Dark. Uh, tons of stuff. I always really loved the guy. The one with the parents was, like, the robot. But he was one of the writers of this movie, um, and this is called The Final Girls. This is one, definitely go out and buy this one, guys, especially if you're a fan of 80s horror and those kind of like slasher films. And um, this, basically the story, though, is this one girl whose mother was a scream queen, you know, she was really known for this one slasher film. At the beginning of the movie, you see her now, and she's really not having a lot of luck. She's going to auditions with her daughter, and they keep on saying, Oh, I remember you from that movie, and she's basically having a hell of a time getting cast. No one's casting or anything. They're leaving the audition, and they end up getting into an accident. The mother ends up dying, and it's three years later, and the daughter is 
kind of living, you know, after what happened. She's pretty upset still and trying to get over it. And one of her friend's brother is obsessed with those movies, the movie that she was in, and wants to have this big screening to honor the mother because it's been three years since she passed away. So she agrees to go and be like the special guest since she's her daughter. And they go to the screening of this movie, and something ends up happening, and uh, the whole place ends up catching on fire. And her with her friends, they end up, you know, having no way to get out of the thing. And they go, oh, isn't there an uh, exit behind the screen? They end up cutting a hole into the screen. By doing that, they end up inside of the movie, the movie that the mother was in. And they have to kind of try and figure out what they're going to do. They get in there, and they end up becoming part of the movie. And it becomes kind of like Pleasantville kind of vibe. And everything that they think they know about the movie has changed. Once they've gone in there, they've altered the whole story and things have all totally different than what it was in the movie. And now they're, you know, the Jason-type character in the movie that was killing everybody at the summer camp is now after them. And they have to try and figure out how they're going to survive and how they're going to end up making it to the end of the movie. And hopefully that's the way to escape the movie and go back to the real world. But this is one that was so well done and so smart and such a fun one. It's one of those movies, too, like, I was watching it, like, going, like, this now finally something really good. You know, like I said, I talk about that a lot. When you watch a lot of movies, and then you watch something that's really, really good, and it's like, you know, like I say, a put-on-the-shelf movie, like a movie you're really happy about and really like. This is one of those movies. This is one of those movies I, would, I, de I definitely recommend you guys pick this up. Uh, it has on here, too, alternate endings, deleted scenes, uh, cast and crew commentary, writer's commentary, um, really love this movie. Really cool. And you know me, I love slasher films and things like that. So this was really work to me. Uh, the next one, this is one from Olive Films, and I've heard about this one a long time. Um, always was interested in seeing this. Um, you know, this is Olive Films through, with Draft House, and this has a making of as well on this, uh, in the Q&A with the cast. And this ha is a movie called Roar, which is an amazingly crazy film. And it's about this guy who ends up... Well, first of all, the movie had all these kind of problems with it. You know, the cast and crew the, had all kinds of in in injuries because they were working with all these untrained lions and tigers and uh, cheetahs and all these different animals. And it's basically, though, about this guy who ends up in Africa is kind of wants to live with the tigers and the lions and he ba they just basically lives with them so there's like dozens and dozens of these tigers and everything all with him they live inside of his house he's there he's they're always like fighting each other around him he's kind of rolling around with them uh, you can see them a number of times biting his hand you can tell he really just bit his hand and it's really crazy what's going on i mean i i, I would if i was in some this kind of situation i don't even think i'd be able to move but you know i would panic around these many lions i know melly griffith who was in this as well she got attacked by the lion and had to have all this plastic surgery done on her face. There was all kinds of accidents that happened in this movie. And if what happens is um, his family, the guy who lives with these lions, family ends up coming out to Africa to visit him. He's going out there to pick them up, but his boat ends up you know, sinking, and the family gets there before he does. They end up getting to the house, and they don't know about him with these lions to the extent. And they end up basically trapped in this house with these lions everywhere, breaking through the walls, and they're trying to figure out how they're gonna, what they're going to do and how they're going to get out of there. And, you know, that's essentially what it was. It was a crazy, crazy movie. Really cool. Great transfer on this. But a movie that will never, ever be done again because it would never be insured. Sure, there would, it was just totally 100% impossible with the amount of lions. I've never seen anything like this in my life. There's sequences, too, with, like, the guy driving his motorcycle right next to these... Uh, these uh, giraffes and like w running with them. I've never seen anything like it in my life. It, it's an amazing movie. Definitely check this out just for the crazy sequences too of the stuff in it. Like I said, you're not, you, there's nothing like that you've ever seen in your life. The next one from Arrow Films is Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat's Collection. And this has two adaptions of the Edgar Allan Poe story, The Black Cat. Uh, one of them, I'll show you what they all are in here, but you know, this is a limited edition one. This is our uh, region A and B release, but it has. The Black Cat, the Lucio Fulci film, and uh, Your Vice is a locked room and only I have the key. This one I had never heard of before. But the one that I want to talk about in here mainly is The Black Cat. This is one, I feel like I might have seen this one a long, like years back. But I really don't remember for sure if I did or not. It's a Lucio Fulci film. It's basically about this old man who has this cat. And he's played by the guy who was in Clockworth Orange. And he was in The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Miss Osborne as well. But he was in, uh, like I said, in uh, 
uh, Clockworth Orange is the old man when Malcolm McDowell and the friends all break into the house and attack the woman. Uh, he's he's the husband of them, you know. And I always he was really cool and he really cool in this movie. But he has this cat that he can kind of control and do his bidding. And the cat ends up going and like killing people and like. Uh, locking them into places, and it's really crazy. All these sequences of the things that the cat is doing. The police are all trying to investigate who is doing these killings and what is ends up happening. Um, that's essentially what it is. Both of these have great transfers on them. Um, they're both in English and Italian as well. Um, but really cool. There's some new features on this one as well. Uh, one of them has Eli Roth talking about the films as well. Like I said both of these, and also has a booklet in here um, with a number of you know. Uh, stuff about the movies and some pictures and all kinds of stuff. They do always do such a great job on their editions of their stuff. Like you know, it talks about the cast and crew. Uh, can't show that one, but you know, you always have to be careful. What you know, you know, flicker through something too quick and show something, and then people are like, "What did I just see?" You know. <laughs> uh, the next one in here though is from. Um, Film Rise, and this is the new documentary uh, on Back to the Future. This is one I was really interested in watching. This is called Back in Time, and this is basically, you know, and they got really a lot of people on this. They got Michael J. Fox, they got Christopher Lloyd, Steven Spielberg, uh, you know, Robert Zemeckis, and they're all kind of talking about the origin of Back to the Future, uh, and they talk about Eric Stoltz, too, in the role. They talk about you know, one thing I love too, when they were talking to Michael J. Fox, they're saying, "What do you remember about the movie?" He's like, "All I really can really remember the most about the first movie was trying to stay awake because at the same time he was shooting uh, Family Ties at the same time, so he was like only really sleeping a couple hours a night. So he would shoot Family Ties during the day, and then right when he finished, he would go and immediately film Back to the Future, um, you know, all night, and then he would get home, and he was they would have to try and pretty much wake him up and." You know, you would never know watching it that he was that exhausted, but it's an interesting thing to hear. And it also talks about, you know, the DeLoreans, the fans who have gone and um, restored DeLoreans themselves. You know, the ones that travel the convention, the ones that, you know, help raise money for uh, Michael J. Fox's charity, Team Fox. But a really, really cool one has on here extended interviews as well. But I really like this. If you're a fan of Back to the Future and want to see a really well-made documentary, definitely check this one out. The next one is another documentary from um, Anchor Bay, and it's a Lego brickumentary. And this is basically a documentary on Legos, and it basically talks about how they started and when they kind of talk about like the origins and things like that, they have like se segments they made with animating Legos and things like that. So some pretty cool sequences of them, things they animated of them. But it's basically talking about the origin of them. Uh, and it talks about people, some of the like the elaborate kind of things people have built and like the real fandoms and people who have built all these elaborate giant buildings and all these kind of different things. Um, and it has on here deleted scenes as well. But it, that's basically what it is, is it just, just kind of talking about the origins of them, uh, the factory, uh, some, a little bit about Legoland, and, you know, some about the Lego movie. But that's really what it is, is if you're a fan of Legos, too, it was a pretty well-made you know, documentary, and Jason Bateman, too, narrates this one. The next one, too, from Anchor Bay is um, the Chris Evans, Alice Eve film that he actually directed, Chris Evans directed this, and it's called Before We Go. And it's uh, both. It's basically a movie about all set one night. Chris Evans is at a, um, you know, at the uh, New York subway state. You know, at this New York subway, uh, Grand Central Station. Alice Eve is there. She ends up, you know, dropping her uh, purse. I believe she ends up dropping something. I can't remember what she drops, and he ends up chasing after her, and she ends up missing her train, and she has no money because she was robbed earlier. You know, her purse was. I mean, she didn't drop her purse. She dropped something. I can't remember what she dropped, but she dropped something. And then she misses the train, and then because of this, they end up kind of start talking. She doesn't know where she's going to go because the, the train station is closing down, and they both, neither of them have any money because they've had all these kind of issues happen to them that night. So, and then he's like, oh, well, we can go out and try and find your purse. They go out to the bar and try and find the purse. And it's kind of just like a movie all about them all at night and what kind of happens and the kind of things that happen to them and kind of getting to know more about their characters and stuff like that. And they both have got some baggage and things like that going on and things that have happened during the day. Alice Eve is, has something going on with her husband and doesn't, you know, believes that the marriage is going to be over because of it. And I don't know. I thought this was actually pretty good. I always like Alice Eve. has been a lot of different stuff. Uh, the next one 
from Anchor Bay, as well as Shelby, A Magical Holiday Tale. And this stars, you know, Chevy Chase and Tom Arnold and uh, Rob Schneider is the voice of Shelby. And you know me, I always love dog movies. And this is basically about a dog movie, about this dog who is, you know, at the, at the pound, and the, the guy at the pound who works there is Tom Arnold. And uh, these this kind of rich family comes in there going, oh, we want to adopt somebody and then they have seen Shelby and one adopted him but he ends up getting away and running away because he doesn't want to be with them and um, the family's like well uh, if you find sh if you bring this dog to us we're going to get you all this money and he's like oh okay I'll do it so it's kind of him going to try and find the dog and it's kind of bumbling around trying to find the dog but the dog ends up you know finding a new family going into the house and the kid that he goes there with it's kind of like acting a little bit like the Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. There's even a scene when he runs on the steps. He's like going, oh, ah! and he's like running down just like Macaulay Culkin did, like putting his hands up. It was really weird. It was almost like he just watched Home Alone right before he did this movie or like he, for his audition, he was just kind of acting like Macaulay Culkin a little bit. But it's basically, though, uh, Tom Arnold's character trying to find him. But then the new dog is with a new family and they become kind of friends. And that, that's pretty much what it was. I actually like this movie. I always like these kind of dog movies with kind of issues and Chevy Chase is in the movie as a grandfather. The next one I got from Image Entertainment is Nicolas Cage, the new horror film with Nicolas Cage, Pay the Ghost. This is basically about Nicolas Cage who goes to a Halloween carnival with his son. When he's there, he ends up like looking around the thing and sees this weird kind of creepy character in the corner. And then all of a sudden when he looks back, his son has gone missing. He starts panicking and it's basically his son's gone missing. He talks to the cops, doesn't know what happened. He's, and it's you know, a whole year later, he's never found his son. And all of a sudden though, something is, ends up happening where he believes he might be able to actually find the son. And it's him with his wife trying to go out and find this whole thing. And he goes through all these weird kind of situations. And it's a pretty creepy stuff. It has like the kind of vibe, a little bit of like insidious with some of the characters and some cool sequences of him too, going through like these weird kind of like underbelly areas of like the city and stuff like that. With some creepy characters. Kind of some of it, some of it too had like vibe of like Crow City of Angels a little bit. It was giving me that kind of vibe a little bit. But it's kind of like, is he going to find the sun? Is the sun alive? What's happened to the sun? And that's pretty much what it is. Um, I actually thought, like I said, it was actually a pretty cool, creepy, weird movie. Nicolas Cage isn't in a ton of horror movies, so I actually like them. And, you know, I even like ones that are kind of weird that he's in, like, you know, uh, The Wicker Man. But more for, like, weird sake, The Wicker Man. But, like I said, this was actually a pretty cool, kind of insidious kind of vibe movie. It's Pay the Ghost. Uh, the next one from Alchemy is a Tara Reid film with Tara Reid, Kane Hodder, and Bill Mosey's in this as well. I wish Bill Mosey was in a little more, though. And this is um, called Charlie's Farm. And I actually like this. There's some really great kill scenes in this. It does take a while, though, for like anything that big to happen with like the, the kills and stuff like that. It's way more of a build-up to it. But it's basically, though, a group of these friends are going out, and they end up you know, to try and like look into like the legend of Charlie's farm and they hear about this thing, go to the location of where it is. And of course, Charlie's there. And, it, you know, it kind of shows the origin of it when he's a kid and what's happened to the parents and how they got killed by this mob of the people in the town. Because the people going, you've been killing people here and people have been vanishing from your land and stuff. And they kill Bill Mosley. And what's kind of funny is there's all these American actors in it in Australia, but they never really explain it. And like, I guess Bill Mosey didn't want to do an Australian accent, or they just, they didn't explain it too much. Because I always think, I, don't, I always used to think, oh, it'd be kind of cool to go to Australia, but I can't really do an Australian accent and like do a movie there. But I'm like, oh, well, I guess you just can do American accent and it doesn't matter. Because like, it was a lot of American characters, like Tara Reid, and they don't really explain it at all, like what, like how they're there or anything, and why there were so many Australian, you know, like Bill Mosey, but his wife wasn't, but he was, had an Australian accent, like, I'm just surprised he didn't have one. I know, you don't need to pay attention to that that much, but I was paying attention to that a lot, but of course they get to the house and Charlie starts killing them, like I said, there's this one great sequence though, with like some really cool kills in this, I like to, it's a real throwback kind of slasher film, um, Kind of reminds me of like the slaughter a little bit, but I don't know. I like this a lot though. It's like I said, it's not the greatest movie of all time, but it was a pretty cool movie. The next one from Alchemy as well is La Valanchula, which was a film for I believe this aired on Sci Fi Channel. This is Mike Mendez's new film. He did Big Ass Spider, he did a segment in Tales of Halloween, which I just reviewed. Um, this was basically, you know, star Steven Gut Steve Gutenberg playing this like actor who was, you know, really 
you know, it's, it's like has scenes with him making movies I thought was pretty cool. But he basically was a really big star in the 80s and early 90s, and things have kind of fallen apart for him. He's kind of having to do like low budget kind of stuff. Um, so it's kind of a spoof on like the, what he's doing, like making a movie like this. It's, I actually kind of like that aspect of it. And it also has on in here a number of the people from Police Academy, you know, Michael Winslow and Patrick Ren is in this movie. And he was actually in the movie uh, The Big Green with Steve Gutenberg. So it was pretty cool to see them together again. And they really are both in all pretty much most of the scenes together. But he basically, though, you know, is going to do this movie about killer roaches, giant killer roaches. He gets in a fight with the director, ends up getting fired, going home. And then, of course, on the way home, there's this giant uh, uh, volcano erupts and actually lets out these gigantic lava type spiders. And spiders are going and killing everybody in the town. And it's kind of Steve Gutenberg trying to survive and survive with these, you know, killer spiders going around everywhere, lighting people on fire and stuff like that. It's a really crazy movie. Uh, it's just a fun, really silly movie, too. Um, it loses steam a little bit near the end, but then it picks up and Michael Winslow's character comes back in there. Like I said, I always, to me, it was kind of cool, and I think it's like the best thing we're going to have until they actually, if they do ever, make a new Police Academy movie. But this was very, very fun film. Uh, the next one from um, Ark Entertainment, this has the Evan Peters, it's the Evan Peters Juno Temple film, uh, Safe Light, which I really, really was interested in seeing this, and Evan Peters is amazing in new American Horror Story ones. I've been watching those. I haven't seen the other seasons, but I'm watching the newest one, you know, Hotel, and it's amazing in that. Like, he's stealing the show in, that, in the newest one, him and Kathy Bates. But this is Safe Light, and it's basically about Evan Peters and Juno Temple, who are a couple, and um, Evan Peters has a bit of, like, a limp when he walks, and kind of people in the town are kind of picking on him and giving him all kinds of problems, and it's kind of him and Juno Temple kind of going out and taking pictures of lighthouses and things like that and kind of putting into a book. And it's pretty much what it is. It's kind of just their relationship and kind of all the kind of issues that are going on around him and the town that they live in. And that's essentially what the what the movie is. I, I liked it, though. It, it's not the all-time greatest film or anything like that. But for what it is, it's basically just a character study piece of them and their relationship and um, throughout all the kind of problems that Evan Peters' character goes to with the people in the town and stuff like that. But I like this one, though. Uh, the next one from Wild Eye Releasing is, I just wanted to talk to you guys about this, is uh, Cesar Nato's Paranormal Halloween, which is the new Cesar Nato film. If you guys didn't see Cesar Nato's uh, Deadly Christmas, I was in that movie, and I have a part in this one as well. Fun little cameo in this with Brendan Mitchell, you know, Wet Movie 1 from YouTube. But this has you know, Felissa Rose, Tiffany Shepis, Vernon Wells, Sean Whalen, uh, Brink Stevens. Um, and this, like I said, this is Cesar Nato's Paranormal Halloween. You can get this on Amazon, everywhere. And also... On this, they actually have the video blogs, you know, pieces of the video blogs that me and Brandon filmed on the set as one of the special features on this one. So definitely check this one out. Look up the trailer for this if you guys are interested. And you can, like I said, you can get this on Amazon. I believe it's also on Video On Demand as well. So you guys can check VOD, you know, uh, Cable On Demand and stuff like that to see if it's on there. And it's Caesar and Otto's Paranormal Halloween. The next one from Vinegar Syndrome is Demonoid. There's nothing bad on the cover, just in case someone says it, I put a thing over it. But this is Demonoid. This is the Blu-ray release. Um, New 2K scan on the movie. Really great transfer in this movie. They also put out Fright Mirrors, I reviewed in the last video. But this one is basically a movie about this guy who ends up working in a mine, um, like the head of the mine. And at the beginning of the movie, though, there's, this hand gets cut off. This is like in the Pharaoh's time, like Egyptian Pharaoh's time. This like evil hand that ends up, you know, they end up finding this hand. The husband, when he's, you know, the head of the mine, finds the hand. And anybody who touches the hand, it kind of makes them crazy and possesses them and puts, like, evil uh, evil things in their mind. And, of course, that guy ends up going and getting everybody inside the mine and then blowing the thing up with them in it. Then he ends up, you know, escaping and hiding out in Vegas. And his wife is, like, trying to figure out where he is and trying to find him. And then, you know, something ends up happening to him and his hand gets severed. And then starts going around, and anybody like touches the hand, or the hand touches, they get possessed, and the hand can kind of like turn into like dust. It's a crazy, crazy, weird out there movie. Uh, I actually like this. Like I, like I said, Vinny Gershner really puts out some cool, different stuff that I had never heard of in my life, and gives it Blu ray transfers and Blu ray treatment. As on here, too, you know, the alternate international cut of the film, interviews as well, and theatrical uh, trailer spots. Uh, and the next one from uh, Vinegar Syndrome as well is The Executioner and The Frozen Zone, I mean, The Executioner Part 2, 
new and frozen a frozen scream sorry um, the main one I'm going to talk about here is frozen scream it's a crazy thing about these people getting killed and putting in this like transplant in them that makes them kind of turn into zombies but the thing that's like the coolest and strangest aspect about the whole movie is it's all cut and like feels like a trailer you know like it, it, one of those things that really when it, you talk about like the essence of like a grindhouse kind of movie the movie feels like a grindhouse spoof trailer and like most of the movie is cut in this way with these narrations and these quick these cuts to it that really feel like it's like an hour and like and it's like an 80 minute long trailer like at least most of the movie feels like that it's like the strangest thing I've ever seen in my life I was watching with my brother and he said the same thing that has that kind of vibe to it but like I said this one is uh, The Executioner Part 2 and Frozen Scream so anyway though guys that's all for this Blu-ray update video thanks again for watching and subscribing and I'll see you guys later